Don't watch this extend the drama. Ignore like it's yeah, streaming see... Avatar for like 10 hours. Oh my god. She I really like uh I really, really like Matt Pat. Actually got banned. What? And this is like 21 on trending, game three dear to a throw up. Like I have to watch this. And I, I don't think I think I'll be able to deal with this without extending the drama. But I will be watching this. Watching some anime. Oh, they got her, bruh. Damn, Toast got banned. That's crazy. Toast got banned. I just turned right. Toast got banned. Toast banned. Why do you really like Mad Pat? I don't know. I think he's all right. I mean, he apparently made a lot of problems. Uh, he like this up a lot. In this episode, we made mistakes when referring to certain streamers in the DMC takedown notices. Hassan's takedown was fake. And disguised toast stages takedown. We also made an error when suggesting Twitch legitimize the TV meta using Amazon Prime, not realizing Prime watch parties are a thing. Dude, how the f are you a 15.4 million subscribe channel? One of like the primary old school YouTubers, and you just bought boofed this video so hard. Like you just didn't care to like do a little bit of research. What the? F I mean, that's crazy. That's actually crazy. Let's watch. No. Isn't Matt a stickler about people streaming his content? I don't care, but you know. Yeah, good luck, dude. Uh, actually, good luck fucking, uh, you know, striking this down, especially considering that uh, I, I am going to be doing is 23 seconds and I'm already like eight mother minutes deep, okay? Yeah, is, this is, this is going to be very, very much fair use within the realm of fair use. Oh, they're coming for us! Not them, me. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that's not going to be asking you. Also, I'm the subject of the video. It'd be really funny if he DMCA'd me for watching a video that he did of me and also other people. Bits or donos, but would love a tap of that subscribe. Hey, I'm Butter Toast Man. Thanks for the infinite month sub. Preach. Welcome to the theorist army, bro. Speaking of going live, I'm actually going to be hosting a massive live stream next week to celebrate the launch of our final security breach. The Dude, what's up with these, like, wh why are YouTubers always, like, shitting off Twitch and then hacking their own Twitch stream? They're like, hey, by the way, like, come watch my Twitch stream. Like, I have a Twitch stream. Fuck Twitch streamers. All these big Twitch streamers suck dick. They're terrible. Also, you should come watch me on Twitch. Uh, okay, sick, dude. Anyway, let's continue. So mark your calendars. I mean, he's literally drama baited to plug his stream, I think. Let's February continue. 19th, shortly after that theory goes live. It's, so, it's, disappointing. it's so disappointing. It's so disappointing. I I like Matt Pat. Uh, I've, uh, I mean, I don't know if we like actually hung out. I can't remember. But uh, at the Uno tournament, he was there. Like, I've, I've liked his videos for a long fucking time. Uh, a lot of people are saying, like, why do you like him? But same vibes as people shitting on you for having money and then plugging their PayPal in the bio. Yeah. I'm going to be joined by various members of Team Theorist, other YouTubers, and of course, all of you as we do some live theory crafting, discussing our general thoughts on the franchise and its latest release. So even though I just made a joke about hitting that subscribe button, you, you really should do it. And don't forget to hit that little bell too, so you're notified when that final theory drops and when we're going live. He doesn't watch copyright anime on stream though, do I? You dingus? What the f*** is that? Shut up, bitch. Costs a whole lot less than a Twitch sub. And with that shameless self-promotion out of the way, it's time to get back to the video. You know what's ironic? YouTube has become what it is today because of its emphasis on watch time. By watching my videos for a long time, you help this channel. If you watch another video of mine immediately following, you help it even more. If I make a 15 minute long video and then you watch it for longer than my 12 minute long videos, that 15 minute one is likely to do better in the algorithm. In very, very oversimplified terms, minutes matter. Which is why videos here on YouTube have gotten steadily longer over the the past decade, where a platform built on two minute long Smosh skits got transformed into one full of two hour long video essays on NFTs. So good. Folding ideas, by the way. Shouts out to him. He did a really good job. TikTok rolled into town like a total Chad saying, hey, short videos over here. And suddenly YouTube is all like, oh yeah, we're, we're, we're Chads too. We're totally down with short videos. Even when they conflict with our watch time based algorithm and we ultimately have to build an entirely separate viewing and promotional experience to make them get any sort of visibility. Mind blowing revelation for everyone. People like short videos. Go figure. The world has come full circle. Who knows? Maybe my ability to count all the way to 55 will become relevant again. I'll do it. So while the rest of the internet quickly regresses back to six second vines, Twitch is over here as the king of long form video. Not just an hour or two long, we're talking six, 10, 14 hour live streams or more. And that's not just a natural evolution like what's happened over here on YouTube, that is actively what Twitch wants. It is what the platform demands. Literal hours worth of content at a time. When platforms like Twitch are contracting streamers, they're committing them not to a certain number of 
of videos or views, but rather to hundreds of hours of committed streamed content every year. True story, I've had talks with Twitch multiple times over the years because I really like streaming, but the huge number of hours that I would have to commit to just pure streaming meant that I wouldn't have time for literally anything else in my life, especially- Yeah, exactly. Well, he knows that at least. ...operating these channels. Oh, before I forget, I got to run an ad. Uh, speaking of Twitch and contracts, top of the hour, every hour, it's time for a six second ad break. Totally forgot to run that. Uh, going to do that right now. Uh, did I actually run it? Nope, forgot it. Okay, 20 minutes in. No longer want to see those ads. All you need to do is subscribe. You can do that for $5. You can do that for free with a Twitch Prime. You can do that by getting gift to the sub if you're lucky. Here's the one minute ad break now. Notice I'm not banning. No, I did not run it. And notice I'm not banning as much today because that's what happens when I'm chiller. That's what happens when I'm chilled the frick out, okay? In short, the grind is real. And streamers, massive credit to them, are forced to figure out creative ways to fill huge gaps of time. That's why over the years we've seen the rise of metas over on Twitch. <laughs> content trends on the platform that many creators follow in order to get viewers watching them while also filling up the massive amounts of airtime that they're locked so it's so far so good by the way this is like an accurate uh, uh description so far Into. haven't seen there anything have been wrong things like the gambling meta which has taken a lot of forms from long stretches of opening loot boxes to more explicitly just playing online slots or roulettes there was famously the hot tub meta where streamers talked or played games in hot tubs as part of a brilliant loophole around twitch's clothing requirements and it went off and spawned its own entire category of content Yoga Pants Twister, ASMR, Mukbang, even massive games like Among Us, Fall Guys, Fortnite, Overwatch, Rust, H1Z1, basically all of them fall into the category of metas. Also, having said the word so many times already, can I just say how much I hate the word meta now because of Facebook? You had to go and ruin another thing, Facebook. And I'm really sorry that this happened. Anyway, with the constant search for the latest trends that can be done for hours at a time, is it any surprise that one of the hottest things from 2021 to top of 2022 has been reacting to TV shows? It's it's easier to produce, you don't have to play anything or rely on audience participation, you can just sit there, you can watch a show that you enjoy, and you can really focus in on your witty banter. <laughs> or not. Anyway, as you might expect- Wait, really? That's so bunk? Wait. Let's see what video that was from. It's participation. You can just sit there. You can watch a show that you enjoy and you can really focus in on your witty banter. Or. Oh, it's one of the Master Show episodes. Wait, well, so what the. F Wait, okay. What am I. Like, when I watch a video, like, I have to constantly, literally every single moment, respond, pause, respond, pause, respond. So here's the thing I have to mention, okay? Here's the thing I have to mention here. You guys are already in here. You already know that I never stop. I never shut the f up. Content creators on YouTube are familiar with my work. No, I never shut the f up. Content creators on YouTube who are not familiar to my work, on the other hand, do this classic fucking bullshit where like uh, they, they clip something from a 12 hour stream or an eight hour stream and it's like literally 10 seconds and go, wow, that's really, that's great. He doesn't react at all, which is again, kind of silly Especially considering that not only do I, not only do I pause the most, it, this is, you know what this has turned into? Okay. You know what this has turned into? This has turned into the classic Hassan runs the most ads on Twitch meme. Remember when like XQC, that son of a bitch said, Hassan runs the most ads on Twitch. And then there was that one Twitter that uh, tracked how many people say ads in a chat. And then because of that, people still to this day think I run the most ads on Twitch, even though out of the top content creators, I run the least ads on Twitch because I personally negotiated my contract and took a demonstrable major fat pay cut specifically so I run less ads because I care more about the uh, content being entertaining for everybody. But it doesn't matter. XQC runs five minutes of ads an hour, and yet I still get asked for running one minute of ads an hour. Because nobody cares about the truth and everybody cares about the narrative and that I am the major villain. This is literally the exact same shit. I am the exact opposite of the person who never reacts without uh, any sort of interaction whatsoever. And it is so fucked up. Like, 
people that watch my content, including Casually Explained, including Philip DeFranco, and all of these other YouTube essayists, they all know that I, I pause so much and offer so much additional commentary. There are videos on YouTube that literally are like, here, let's, lo let's, lo let's look at this. Okay, hold on. Hassan, Hassan Piker, Asanabi, Stunlock, okay? There are entire YouTube videos dedicated to how long my stunlocks are. It's like, Hassan, Hassan self stunlocks, very rare. Okay. Our reaction room is bad people. 25 minute into one hour plus one hour plus stun lock. One hour stun lock. Did Symphony say it? Drama. Massive fitness and fat shaming stun lock. As we try to stun lock Hassan Abi. Like the free bleeding stun lock. There are so many videos. Okay. There are so many videos, including the funniest one, which is like this video triggered Hassan into it. This 24 minute video. What was it? This 24 minute video triggered Hassan into a two hour stop. Yeah, here, this one is my favorite. This one, 24 minute Jubilee video triggers Hasanabi for two hours. Like I am literally Pazanabi. People call me Pazanabi. And yet for some reason, outside of the people that refuse to watch my stream, even for like, you know, an hour, okay? Mother will literally just make up their mind. They just, and it's, it, there's no shot you've watched the stream. There's just no shot. You have ever watched the stream. If you think, I just literally never respond. You rarely don't, but the fact that it happens at all for people, yeah, but that's ridiculous. Because over the course of an eight hour to 10 hour broadcast, you are going to see other streamers that pause way, way more. So it's people that are either A, oblivious to how Twitch content works, or B, never watch Twitch content at all and think they're above it because they watch YouTube essays, or C, people who already know the, how Twitch content works, don't care when their favorite uh, does it, don't realize when their favorite does it, but are using this or weaponizing it against someone like myself because they just despise me and my worldview and think I'm a hypocrite grifter. I'm currently, ironically, in a meta stun lock talking about how much I add to a regular video. And I'm not doing it because I wanted to prove a point. This is just how I react to videos. Anyway not anyway as you might expect the tv meta was not long for this world for as quickly as it arrived on the platform and as popular as it was it was killed off by takedowns and dmca notices in january pokemane got a 48 hour ban after streaming episodes of avatar the last airbender oh my god she actually got banned what less than a week later disguised toast got a one month ban for streaming death note toast? not true he didn't get about one month ban come on brother if you think you aren't here for the pauses you probably would prefer youtube yeah exactly and? No. They're coming for us! And it wasn't just animated shows either. That same week, Hassan got a copyright takedown for streaming clips of MasterChef. The MasterChef meta is over. Needless. That's not even true. Once again, the MasterChef. That's a like incredibly important part. Bro, this video came out yesterday. This is like eight. Th how many months has it been? How many months has it been? How did he not even verify any of this? Dude, come on, Matt Pat. What the f what is happening? Was I lied to this whole time? Is this just a theory? The game theory? Like, the game theory was all a lie this entire time? Is this the level of research he puts into his videos? Holy shit, what the freaking what? I'm sorry, what? <sighs> this is literally just a Kotaku article in video form? No, dude. The, the, the ironic part about this is that... The ironic part about it is that Kotaku has the additional uh, uh, details. This is like a Dexerto article. Like, he didn't even look at Kotaku. He just he just looked at LSF and Dixerto and wrote a video off of Dixerto and LSF. January 10th is when I tweeted out that it was fake. 38,000 likes, man. How did you... How? How did you miss this? It's been a month and a half, dude. I even, you know, had a conversation with Philip DeFranco who made a joke about it. I know. I know he put it in the react... I know, guys. I know. I saw. I saw. My point is... It's not, it didn't happen yesterday, and he had to, like, he missed it. It happened a month ago. How the f*** did you miss that? It's literally from a month ago. If this was something that was a kinetic situation, if this was something that was on, if this was something that just happened, okay, then maybe he missed it. Guess what, dude? There's 1.8 million views on this right now. Let, she let's got see. Wait, hold on. No chance. 1.9 million views on this. It's number 41 on trending. They're not going to look at the retraction. They're not going to look at the clarification. They're going to think I got cla ass clapped for not reacting to MasterChef.
TV shows. It's easier. I'm literally talking in this too. I'm talking in this. I'm talking in the part that he silenced Produce. so that he can hyper focus on the part. Zoom in on the part where I'm not talking. What the? Focus in on your witty banter. I mean, it's not that big of a deal in the end of the day, okay? I, I get asked on a daily basis, okay? I, I, it's just the way it is. People just literally lie about me all the time. But that's crazy, dude. It's like, come on. I actually think you pause right after this. I remember this or even the clip he shows. I think you pause. Or not. Anyway, as you might... I don't understand why, like... Oh my lord, dude. It's just... Oh, it's so bad. It's so trash. Doo-doo trash. Yikes. All right, where is the Master Chef part? Where was he? One of the hottest things from 2021 to could be done thing already. Can I just say how much I really I reaped the popular for band? As down just doing what you taught them to do, but you twitch point. I had a chance feeling very Wait. Master Chef. The Master Chef meta is over. Needless to say, no one was feeling very Pog Champ that week. So today, as the dad pat of digital video, it's time we had a chat twitch. Yeah, homie didn't even research how to write my name. Okay, he's got like the, the double S out here. Wait. I agree that Twitch needs to grow up on this overall. E pause Vox. Oh, this guy's crazy. Uh, even though he he clarified my name here, surprisingly. Also, Asan's DMC it turned out to be fake. Come on over. Come on. Come on. Sit down. I'm I'm not mad. I'm just I'm just disappointed. And and not in your streamers. In you, Twitch. They're just doing what you taught them to do. But you, Twitch, you should know better. <sighs> You're not a kid anymore, kiddo. And with that comes some serious responsibilities. Responsibilities to your creators. Responsibilities to your viewers. And responsibilities to the multinational global. Okay, I just I hate this so much. How much you want to bet he got paid for YouTube by, uh, for this one? No, he didn't get. Dude, that's a conspiracy. I. That's just a theory. Okay. And I'm not gonna engage in a conspiracy theory, okay? But it, it, it is, it is like, well, what is he like? Educating Twitch as a platform, like, hey, hey, Twitch, you should not let streamers stream the way that they're streaming. That's okay. Global conglomerates that fill your pockets. As a company that is run by literally the richest man in the world, Twitch, you have no excuse to be this irresponsible. Grow up. I mean, this for the record, this is actually like just. How is it any different than like asking for an adpocalypse on Twitch? I mean, seriously, the, you just made a YouTube video that's like pumped up where you're demanding or asking for an adpocalypse to happen to Twitch while saying it could really happen if you don't take actions. You know, that's crazy. What the fuck? Uh, or you are going to be so grounded, mister. Copyright infringement is obviously a Here's the clip of you that they used. Time of the clip. Oh, Do you, want, you were silent for like a minute because Marat came in immediately yeah, left and you were texting him. Off of that. Yeah, I, I'm definitely texting Marat. There's probably some shit going on in the background. I wonder how much reaction they had to watch to find this clip. You, what the fuck? Your literally seconds are being measured here. Who the fuck is this? 24/7. Yeah, there's some shit going on for sure. I don't remember what it was, but there was probably something happening that I had to like immediately uh, text Marat. I just noticed something. First of all, Marat just came in. He didn't even ring the doorbell, dropped his bike, and left. Okay, no hello, no nothing. I just saw it on my cameras. I'm like texting him, like, what the fuck are you doing? You're not going to come say hi? So that's one. Two, it's just literally, he was like, yeah, I'm dual sport riding today, brother. I, uh, you know, I got no time for you. Okay, just dropped his bike off and left. He didn't even say hi. Okay, so not only, not only was I like not, uh, uh, you know, yeah, I wasn't like on. I wasn't like reacting super hard in that one minute block. Uh, I do also pee, for the record. Uh, you can definitely make, and some content creators, some Nazi content creators, alongside other content creators who are not Nazis but uh, don't have a problem collaborating with them, uh, have made many, 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 many uh, clips uh, where I am not uh, on camera. Some of them literally will look to the memes that Austin Ox and other people in this community make and take it seriously. Like Austin Ox one time uh, put that AI... Like he put up like a AI found, you know, the most common frame from Hassan streams. And it was like just my chair and a, and, and a salad. And they thought that that was serious. Like I saw people literally using that. Like whenever Austin Ox or you guys make actual memes uh, in this community, there are like actual psychos out there who think that that's a legit take. They can't understand that this is like inside baseball. We're just like making jokes amongst ourselves and they um i don't think you should treat him charitably there's no chance this wasn't on purpose 
Yeah, I mean, maybe he just doesn't care. He probably does not care. It's a big deal like, over here on YouTube. Anyway, you continue. risk demonetization or a copyright strike that could threaten the standing of your channel if you so much as walk into a mall that has copyrighted songs playing in the background. It is literally one of the biggest reasons why music theory will never be the fourth theorist. They are demanding you pay someone to make a BRB screen. I don't need to pay someone to make a BRB screen. I could just make one myself. But like, why? Why would I do that? Why would I make a BRB screen for the people who are watching that are going to be complaining that I put a BRB screen rather than like keep the shit going? Like, why would I, why would I capitulate to people that don't watch me that will overall make the content worse for the people that do? That's so weird. Like, no one who's actually in this community actually wants a BRB screen. People yell at me whenever I pause. I think most people are used to other streamers using a BRB is all. No, that's not even true. There aren't, there aren't like... Out of the top streamers on this platform, who the f*** use a BRB screen? Like, that's not a real thing. Unless you're talking about Amaranth, and that's it. Why would I f*** facts when Hassan leaves is the only time we can watch the video without pauses? The whole point is for you to react? Yes, I understand that. Except, I'm already, I'm still reacting. Even when I'm, the only time when I don't, the only time when I'm not, like, watching the video actively is if I literally had to get up because of an emergency, okay? And that's it. That's it. Anyway, let's continue. Channel. As much as I, and I'm sure many of you would like it to be. There are just certain types of content that are too dangerous to touch here on the platform. There are these massive archives of practically every video and audio track that has ever existed, scanning in real time against your videos to ensure that you're not ripping off someone else's stuff unfairly each time you hit upload, or each time you press go live. Most of the time, I know that I've done something wrong before the video even gets published, because the system now scans it in advance. Whereas these Twitch streams, they were showcased Casing entire seasons of shows, uncut, unedited, and honestly unreacted to. Every 20 minute episode available for people to watch for free for months before it ever became an issue. Nothing shows the difference between the platforms more clear. <laughs> At least this guy's honest. He says, oh, and they would still shit on you if you did a BRB screen. Of course than Ludwig. For those of you who don't know, Ludwig makes great content. I love all the stuff that he produces. This one video alone about how he got views to a secret channel that he created is a masterclass in how digital platforms reward smart people who work hard and think critically. He is a really smart, really creative dude. I highly recommend you check him out. Anyway, last year, he became the streamer with the highest all-time concurrent subscriber count on Twitch, gaining nearly a quarter of a million subscribers in a month thanks to a continuous live stream of his life where each new sub extended the length of the stream. I mean, as much as I love uh ludwig and i really do love ludwig he is quite literally one a react andy two if i ever did the same subathon that he did are you f joking you know how hard i would get ass blasted by the exact same people that would probably hype him up right now are you insane are you insane dude can you imagine what was ludwig doing he was like literally he was like sleeping uh, uh half the time on the subathon map Pat made a video about wilbur suits R arg and used the theory that wilbur denounced so long ago it seems like he does this a lot i mean it's just weird as fuck he literally slept on stream while videos were playing on stream what yeah that's what i mean like what the f like didn't he f run i mean i didn't watch the subathon but like wasn't he literally playing videos while or there was a mod cast but like wasn't he also sleeping while videos were playing too Subathon is is what I do on steroids, you know? By 10 seconds. But it has been 30 days. 30 days total. As the clock winds, two minutes left. I got nothing left to say, but thank you. So in late 2021, YouTube swiped him up from Twitch to be an exclusive streamer here. And he immediately- Aren't you a communist though? I'm a leftist, okay? I'm a democratic socialist. I'm a leftist. That doesn't change anything. Like that is not a magical- like that's not a magical thing for you to be able to just like create an entirely separate uh, rule set for me okay it's like aren't you a communist though that's a perfect example okay this is literally just like oh well i don't like your ideas which is why i think it's unacceptable when you do something i have no principles i just don't like when you do something also that ludwig uh video made blow up he clout chased the miscuse don't know yeah that's that was the that was the point of the Ludwig video, which I'm surprised he didn't even mention. And he also did a fucking sleep media share. That's like way, way, way worse, dude. Immediately got banned. It's my third day on YouTube and I got banned from streaming. And dude, you literally got shit for saying I'm taking off Twitter by the same people who literally want you to stop streaming. Yeah, I mean, dude, if you want to understand here, I'll, I'll just show this real quick. Um, now that some time has passed and it, it's not as like prescient or important for me uh or or as damaging here i'll just show you this okay 
I tweeted out, I'm taking two days off streaming. I'm burnt out. I don't feel excited to stream and I don't want to do that to you guys. I want to be able to make the best content possible and I'm sorry. Okay. And if you click on the, if you click on the, uh, the, the uh, quote tweets, it's like, he's being AFK while the video is playing too hard for you. The real working class streaming video games, not driving trucks. No one cares though. Live Assam reaction. You stream Master of Eat half the time, make the world's, uh, make the work word salad. How do you get exhausted from reacting to the YouTube videos? Lamau. How do you get burnt out from letting your viewers watch subscription content completely for free slash Jen? Not a single one of these people follows me, by the way. I don't know why. I don't know how they got this idea that I do this for some weird reason. And it's like so hard to play computer for 200K a month, stealing content and being AFK's backbreaking soul, soul crushing work. It's K chat has been pretty toxic. Also give me a reason not to go on Twitch. I'm burnt out from sitting at money, sitting at computer chatting and playing video games for huge amounts of money. It's like, go back to your own country. Hey, Hassan, while you're at it, if you just streamed your chair, nobody would know the difference. I mean, it's just like, it's very sad, but I do deal with this on a daily basis, right? Like I, 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 I do deal with this on a daily basis. This LARP is the most privileged little shit back on the internet. When you get told you need to make your own original content. Honestly, when I bought a Ford Fiesta, I felt the same way. Hey, what the fuck? We had a deal. You should consider doing that every day. Are you going to stop stealing people's content now? Or like, so this is, um, this is a, a consequence of like me routinely, routinely fucking reacting to people who are looking for this interaction, which is ironic because they say I run away from criticism, but the reason why I don't run away from criticism is precisely why I get so much extra unreasonable criticism in comparison to my peers who don't do that. And I can't stop myself from doing it because I constantly want to check myself. I constantly want to make sure, uh, if you notice you're getting racist promoting your work, you might need to chill the fuck out. What? Um, I constantly, I constantly have to look for, uh, you know, the, the people criticizing me. So I understand where they're coming from. Maybe there's something that I haven't seen. I do care about it. They hate you, but they pin your Twitter profile to watch react on your tweets. Yeah. And I just wish, uh, I don't know. I just wish I could get like, I just wish I could get these people to be charitable. That's all I care. That's, that's all I want. All I want is for uh, more than anything else. All I want is for these people that are always saying things like, dude, you fucking suck. You're so bad. And the people that are criticizing me for uh, things that I'm not doing, especially considering that the things that I'm not doing are like things that I'm kind of on the exact opposite, the diametrical uh, opposite end ends on. Like they're saying I play videos and then I walk away when I'm famous for not doing that. You know what I mean? They say I run away from criticism when I'm famously uh, incapable of not looking at uh, criticism. And that's what fucking pisses me out because it feels like an active gaslighting uh, mission. You know what I mean? It, it just feels like it just feels like I am being actively and deliberately gaslit by uh, you know a, a dedicated uh, group of haters all the fucking time who pick the things I do actually care about because like I make a lot of mistakes. Like uh, the 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 one video that I watched uh, a year ago, like that was. That was not good. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have done that. And I apologized even back then a year ago. Right. Um, like there are, there are warranted criticisms for things that I do. And then there are, uh, completely unwarranted and weird criticisms, which, uh, blow my mind. But then those criticisms have staying power because, because you know, guys like Matt Pat will like be motivated and guided by all this like weird shit. An illusion when you're away is when the video is playing and hence what is shown is shown in the YouTube edit. Anyway, let's continue. And again, I technically got banned once. And banned again. Three times. Not through anything offensive, mind you, but because of copyright stuff. He was reacting to top YouTube videos when Pink Fong brought the Baby Shark ban hammer down on him. Apparently, DMCA is going to be a little bit more of a concern than I had originally imagined. It's worth noting that the other two bands, he was just kind of playing into the whole thing and memeing it up. But anyway, I think he summed it up best here. It is kind of crazy that in the first four days on YouTube, I got banned. In the first four years on uh, Twitch, I never got banned. But growing pains, baby. The platforms are very different in how they deal with copyrighted work. But why? Well, the issue really comes down to Twitch's copyright enforcement, or lack thereof. I don't think anyone was truly surprised by the takedowns that happened. Damn. For the record, this is really f***ed up, again, because it's like actively calling, while simultaneously virtue signaling about like a content moderation system potentially like ruining Twitch, you're actively calling for it. Or at least a lot of people were saying, oh, if you keep this up, there's going to be an active content moderation system, and then you're going to be just as f***ed as us on YouTube. 
Meanwhile, MatPat didn't even do that virtue signaling side. He's just straight saying like, I'm pro copyright. There should be a, uh, there should be a active, uh, uh, active content ID system that they know that MatPat knows because we're all YouTube content creators as well. All, all of us Twitch streamers are also content creators on YouTube, relatively sizable content creators on YouTube, including Ludwig, including XQC, including myself including disguised toes and we already know what how bad it is on the youtube side there are entire sectors there are cottage industries created specifically to abuse the youtube content id system something that they complain about regularly and understandably so and now they want that to happen on twitch as well and that's crazy anyway let's continue yeah but he got banned that's crazy I mean, it's not that crazy. What was confusing and frustrating was the inconsistency of the takedowns. While Pokemane and Hassan were getting copyright takedowns, there were others like XQC and Moist Critical who were still doing the same thing with no repercussions. It wasn't a simple case of break the rules, get clapped. Rather, as XQC put it, they enforce based on how likely it is to blow up. It's why boxing stuff is extremely DMCA. It is the most insanely enforced DMCA out there. It's like boxing or UFC, it's in the takedown. Because they Why didn't he just use my video talking about this? Like, I, I described this uh, in, I would say, uh, less Papagan terms. I mean, XUC does a good job describing this stuff too, but here's the reality. What XUC is talking about is, um, what XUC is currently talking about is, like, how litigious copyright holders are. Copyright holders that are incredibly litigious, like boxing stuff, UFC, the Olympics, which XQC knows very well, those guys can't watch any of their stuff. They will clap you. They will ass clap you immediately. Okay. MasterChef, on the other hand, things that, uh, you know, have been on the internet, things that we can watch on YouTube. Okay. Those are our copyright, uh, copyrighted product that are stale, older, and for the most part, not something that like the copyright holder is actively uh, looking to take down. That's precisely why they've been on YouTube for many, many years, for example, a lot of, in a lot of instances. So I think you also get, uh, you being a leftist, get mass reported by right-wing trolls. Yeah, no, I know. I, I mean, I deal with it every day. I deal with fucking Nets DZ, DG, whatever, the, the anti-hate speech, uh, region lock restrictions every day. Um, also, um, yeah, two of the three judges were memeing about it. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's like, you don't get clicks for your takes, only for the hate. Yeah. Anyway, let's continue. We'll take action in real time. Look at them to other It's the Wild West. Nobody knows what's gonna stick, what's not gonna stick. And this is a guy who probably knows a thing or two about what will and won't get you a copyright notice, considering that last year he got into hot water for reacting to clips of the Olympics. But he does raise an interesting point. YouTube is like an archive of the internet. The videos uploaded by your favorite creators live next to grainy t I've been in part of the community for a better part of the year. You are far and away one of the most good faith content creators online. While they made some okay points that YouTuber wholly misrepresented you and your work in the video and they 100% knew exactly what they were doing. You shouldn't get so much flack. Do good work here. I know, but it, it has staying power. Like it, it does. You can, you can create a video where you make yourself seem like you're operating in good faith and then uh, it totally, totally just uh, destroy someone. Like absolutely ass blast them. Make them look like a piece of shit, especially when you're, especially when you're, uh, online and you're a Twitch streamer and you're live for eight hours, you can get, you can draw some kind of reaction out of someone in a weak moment and only show that part of them. And then you're absolutely. F and also a lot of people exactly will not have their minds changed about me. I could literally, I could stop a fire in a burning orphanage and mother be like those orphans were going to become Nazis and he's actually in support of Nazis and it sucks. I don't know what to do. It just, I, I don't like when people despise me for no good reason. If people despise me because I'm a leftist, because I'm a socialist, they think that like that is unacceptable. They believe uh, that there are like, that they themselves are reactionary and they despise me for that reason. I'll take that every day. A lot of Nazis hate me. A lot of right wingers hate me. Okay. That's fine. That's totally fine. That's one thing. But when like other people that are supposedly on the left, when they fucking turn around and they're like, dude, uh, this guy is not woke enough. This guy's a misogynist. This guy's, this guy hates women of color, things like that. Um, that, that sort of stuff absolutely sucks because it's just stopping people who would otherwise probably like what I have to say and agree with me. Um, I literally am mutual mad at you cause you didn't get $50 to the mutual aid fund request. As if you don't have tanky people asking for money. Wait, what? I don't know what the fuck that is even. That's crazy. There's a reason. They are every chatter that's constantly contradictory towards you. They want free clout. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I, yeah.
240p Simpsons clips uploaded back in 2007. That means that there's an unlimited amount of time for copyright holders to discover copyrighted material and issue takedowns. Conversely, VODs on Twitch only live for 30 days max, and a lot of times the streamers won't even keep the VODs around at all. That means that's also not true because Twitch's internal system keeps those VODs permanently and actually DMCA copyright auto, uh, like the, the auto scanners that look for DMCA-able copyrighted content can still access those VODs. And as a matter of fact, it doesn't even matter. Many people have actually been banned for VODs that they don't even have up anymore. So once again, another major issue with MatPat's dog shit research, dude, what the f I thought this dude was like one of the best YouTube content creators when I was younger. What the fuck is going on? Like unironically surprising how bad this video is uh, from a from a point of view of like just getting all the basic stuff, getting all the basic stuff right that most of the time when streamers do get caught, it usually has to be live. High profile incidents where the streamers are caught red handed, smacked down in the middle of a stream. But to catch and report these incidents requires a lot more effort on the part of the copyright holder, as they're probably not going to be randomly tuning into an eight hour XQC stream at three in the morning on the off chance that he's reacting to some hunter hunter. When it does happen, it's usually for live. That's not even, that doesn't even happen. I mean, that that's like... It, the hunter hunter people could if they actively have fucking scanners they could still clap him pay-per-view events like boxing and MMA matches where the fight organizers want to make really sure that the only way you're seeing Floyd Mayweather and Logan Paul dancing around each other for a rigged fight is to pay $49.99 to insert streaming service here. And the truth is, the idea of deleting your VODs on Twitch isn't just something someone figured out one day to help with copyright strikes. It is something that Twitch has explicitly encouraged in their communications with streamers in the past. Back in May of 2021, Twitch sent an email out to creators warning streamers about using copyrighted music and responded to, quote, a batch of DMCA takedown notifications with about a thousand individual claims from music publishers. All of the claims are for VODs. Based on the number of claims, we believe these rights holders used automated tools to scan and identify copyrighted music and creators' VODs and clips. I don't know about you, but reading between the lines, it seems a lot like Twitch is telling streamers, this is how not to get caught. Don't save your VODs. And you know what? You don't even have to read between the lines because later in the same letter, they outright say, quote, if you know you have unauthorized music or other copyrighted material in your past VODs or clips, we strongly recommend that you permanently delete anything that contains that material. And it seems like most streamers got the message loud and clear. And that's just irresponsible, Twitch. You're being a bad influence and setting your creators up for trouble. That whole delete stuff because other people have automated tools and are hunting us down mentality? Yeah, you're too big, you're too old, and you have too many creators depending on you for their livelihoods to play so Wait, what? What is this? Why are you defending that predatory system of copyright hunting? If you yourself are saying that that predatory system of copyright hunting can potentially take your website down. Like, you can't snitch on the one hand while simultaneously, and people are going to say, oh, snitching. I know everybody always, like, um, hyper-focuses on the terminology that I use, so I'll just say virtue signaling instead. You can't virtue signal about, like, how copywriting, uh, how copyright uh, is, is, you know, going to take down an entire website that all these other streamers rely on while simultaneously making a video as the top con one of the top content creators on YouTube with 1.9 million views where you're basically saying you need to have a DMCA system like an automatic DMCA system that you have on YouTube as well even though you actually admitted that it was like bad and that's why Ludwig got banned a bunch of times that's so weird what the f dude I will never understand this the internet was created for theft okay it was created for piracy it was created for theft it was well not really but that's one of the things that you could do on the internet i love and stand by open source software developers i will ride or die for them obs being a great example of this that's what makes the internet incredible okay that's what makes the internet good that's like one of the remaining bashes Wait, well, wikipedia is awesome it's like open source and sharing should be at the heart of the internet and how the internet should work Okay, like it's nuts that that you have people that are regularly advocating routinely for digital enclosures. This goes against making art. This goes against making beautiful, wonderful, entertaining things. This goes against the the what makes the internet good. Like why the f would you advocate for digital enclosures? Why would you advocate for further uh, difficulties in content creation who's benefiting who stands to benefit from this not small content creators the only people that will stand to benefit from more aggressive copyright protections are mega corporations and that's it people always love to use small content creators 
as a talking point in this circumstance, right? Small content creators will be able to make sure that like big businesses uh, don't steal their content, but it's like, that's not what it's used for. That's never what it's used for, okay? It's used, and that's the reason why it's the same exact energy as like Republicans saying, oh, we care about small businesses. Like, no, the fuck you don't. You care about mega corporations, but you can't say that. That's why you turn around and say you care about small businesses because it sounds better. So why are you, I guess someone who does consult for YouTube, okay, making this video, you know, trying to make a YouTube competitor worse overall? Not everyone's ready to openly say it's okay to break the law. I don't think my point of view is from concern. Yeah. If it was, if his point of concern was, ooh, then he wouldn't have made this video. Anyway fast and loose with the rules at this point. YouTube has not only managed to make a system that works for archived videos, but also for their live content. The systems just automatically scan live streams for copyrighted content and takes them down when necessary. No one thinks this is good, by the way. Like, there is not a single person that thinks this is a good system. It's such a bad system that if you, like, literally get falsely tagged for a 10-second clip, it automatically demonetizes your YouTube video. Now, that's not a problem for someone like Ludwig, who still hates it, but here's how it really works. Ludwig doesn't get paid off of his, like, live streams, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty sure he already has a flat, uh, you know, payment that he gets from YouTube. But you know who that, that does genuinely destroy? Because the bulk of Ludwig's revenue comes from the YouTube contract that he got. You know who doesn't get a YouTube contract? Every Tom, Dick, and Harry that wants to start off on YouTube as a live streamer. Those people are not making any money whatsoever because they've watched Baby Shark or they watched one video that automatically got clapped, a 10 second blip that now magically demonetized their entire video. So if you truly care about small content creators, then you would never, ever in a million years Try to implement this system on Twitch as well. It's terrifying. And every single content creator that is like even talked about the DMCA strikes, um, uh, that is virtue signaled about it, has said, we warn you, Twitch is going to turn into YouTube and that's bad. Okay. That's what I'm saying. It's like fucking virtue signaling. You're, you're like making it seem like this is going to destroy the platform if they don't do something about it. But MatPat at least is like literally advocating for this awful system to be implemented on Twitch. And it might be, it's inevitable. There, there will come a point, if they keep dressing this over and over again, there could be a point where they actually do implement a system like YouTube's, okay? And that's going to make the platform worse overall. It's just the truth. Just ask Ludwig. And guess what? That's not me just being a shill for YouTube. TikTok is working on their version. Heck, even Facebook has a version of live copyright monitoring and they're the absolute worst. Twitch, on the other hand, is just not interested in doing that. According to a January report by the Washington Post, quote, Twitch has yet to create its own automated system for live content ID and it does not appear to be in the process of doing so. That is crazy, Twitch. You've been doing live streaming for longer than anyone. If anyone should have been on the front lines setting the industry standard, it should have been you. Because guess what? Not only does it put your creators in the line of fire, but it's shooting yourself in the foot. By not self-policing, by not setting the tone for how copyright is handled on your platform, you are passing the power to third parties. People who are going to be much less lenient, much less forgiving, and when the dam does break in situations like this one, it's going to give your platform and your creators a big blackout. Content stealers equals billionaires who still surplus value? Yeah. Yeah. Um... There's also not a single content creator on the internet, like for the most part, that doesn't technically steal content. Like you will always, you'll always find someone, even in like hyper edited YouTube videos that they're like, oh, he didn't pay for this. He didn't pay for this image. Boom. Violation of copyright. He didn't pay for this image. Boom. Violation of copyright. Like it just, it's all a matter of like how hard people want to enforce it. I've talked about this before. He didn't, I don't even think he, you know, paid for the Twitch image uh, logo either. I don't even know if you're allowed to use that. Guy, you've been able to get by so far because you've been under the radar. But now that low profile persona is fading away and this is going to start happening more and more. And also, don't, don't you like money, Twitch? I know your big, big boss man, Jeffy Bezos does and probably give you a by the way, this is because of safe haven platform laws? Yes, exactly. Twitch played it smart and didn't set a precedent and didn't pursue claims on their own. This makes it so they can claim ignorance. YouTube and Facebook both f***ed up long ago, pursued claims they weren't asked. Well, no, YouTube and Facebook did not f*** up. YouTube had to create uh, the DMCA system. It got sued at the ass. Wasn't that WAPA article about your fake strike? Yeah, uh, yeah, it was uh, Matt Pat literally used a clip there illegally. He technically slandered you. I mean, yeah, it doesn't matter. That's just how content 
that's how content works that's how content works technically that's fair use too by the way like let's be real that's absolutely fair use just like me reacting to his video is a fair use i could still copy strike him and then we would actually have to go to litigation and then i would have to prove that it's not actually fair use or that uh, matt pat would have to prove that it is fair uh it is fair use but uh ultimately it's all a matter of of what your uh what your what the functionality of it is what you're using what you're you know what you're doing or with the copyrighted content it's kind of weird that he said like jeff bezos jeff bezos is not even the ceo anymore that's like come on that's like super easy stuff pat in the head if you earned him more maybe he'd paint one of his rockets twitch purple or something growing up as a platform and building these sorts of copyright tools would likely make advertisers brands and media companies all of them more comfortable with your platform and the content on it meaning wait what the f those content those big corporations love twitch Twitch CPMs are relatively high. As a matter of fact, one of the biggest problems with Twitch is literally that there isn't, there's inventory that's not being fulfilled. That's why they had to establish ad contracts. Uh, that's why they had to establish, like they had to literally experiment with forcibly putting ads into every fucking facet they can. Dude, what the f uh, Come on, you're like a, you're, aren't you like a corporate, isn't he like a literal corporate, uh, uh, like analyst guy for YouTube too? Doesn't he like literally help other YouTube channels? I know he helped like the Young Turks at a certain point. Uh, it's wild that he is, it's wild that he is unfamiliar and he's like trying to say like, Twitch, you could be making even more money. Like what the f please can you copy, copy, copy strike this? So he learns to get juice. What? No, I'm not going to fucking do that. Take an hour off. That's so stupid. I would not do that. I don't do that. And not only is he, is he like, you know, not only is he like saying that he has better ideas for Twitch on how to make more money. Um, but also he's getting it wrong regardless. Ultimately, more money for you and your creators. Just consider the meta that we're talking about today where Twitch streamers are watching TV shows. Twitch has proven in the past that non-stop streams of TV shows could work back in 2017 when they did a two-week live stream marathon of Yu-Gi-Oh! on the official Twitch Presents channel to an audience of tens of thousands of concurrent viewers that were monetized by frequent ad breaks. Give you that real, authentic TV experience. Uh, internet and the TV truly have become one and the same. That may have been a one-time event, but then what about the official Bob Ross channel? That one's going strong, doing 24 and 48 hour streams of the joy of painting with each stream reaching over a hundred thousand views and yeah you can purchase a channel subscription to twitch user bob ross examples like these show that the twitch tv meta doesn't have to be a legal liability if twitch is willing to turn it into a legitimate commercial opportunity right now there's an underground whisper network of what shows you can get away with streaming on twitch without getting a copyright strike but instead of that what happens when a company with a big nostalgia property decides to openly give twitch streamers permission to use their content or yeah, this side of the conversation is great, but again, it complete. First of all, I had I have these conversations with literal Twitch executives, okay, about this. One, we already have a system called a watch party, okay, and guess what? The main problem with the watch party structure, okay, the main problem with the watch party structure is that it has it's region locked. It's region locked, and even if you're like a prime uh, owner from Canada, you can't watch certain content because unfortunately, copyright is region locked. Okay, and if you don't routinely enforce your copyright, you can literally lose it. Okay, in most circumstances, actually, the international copyright is insignificant in comparison to the NA copyright. The American copyright is the most strict, or rather, uh, has like very serious, uh, like a different way of, of uh, prosecuting people or persecuting people who like are violating that copyright. But the, the, the idea is great. It's a sound idea. He's not wrong, okay? It would be great if uh, we could have completely uh, uh, like allowed, if we, if we just like talked to fucking MasterChef and they were like, yeah, watch our shit, it's fine. But they can't do that, okay? Part of the reason why they can't do that is because of international copyright laws. Um, International copyright laws is, uh, are, are very different, so you can only region lock it, which, of course, is very difficult on Twitch. So then, all of a sudden, you are, what, like, stopping people from Canada from watching or stopping people in Japan from watching and all this other stuff. Um, and, and the other reason is why, like, uh, major corporations can't just, like, let their copyright go um, with fear that, like, they might not be able to have ownership over it anymore in the future. And that's because, yes, the copyright law is fundamentally flawed. Exactly. It's old and it's fundamentally flawed.
or pay them to do it. Say, I don't know, get a popular streamer to do a marathon of the Ghostbusters cartoon to get people excited for when the new Ghostbusters movie hits theaters. Or get popular Twitch streamers to stream their live reactions to the first few episodes of a new season of TV. I mean, let's be honest here. If they already do that, all this is done. I mean, they literally do this for Arcane with Netflix. Uh, all of this is already happening. I don't know how he like missed, like he's giving advice on things that are currently happening. So that, we already have watch parties. And even outside of the realm of watch parties, we've literally had like react fucking streams and stuff like that, specifically for Arcane uh, and, and all this other stuff. It's just such a weird uh, video because like even the ideas that he's putting forward are either A, impossible to implement as a consequence of how international copyright works, or B, literally, uh, you know, um, fundamentally misunderstands how international copyright works or has uh, it, it done zero research and is unaware that this is already happening. I did this as well, by the way. I watched Borat 2. I, I debuted Borat 2 on the main page of Twitch. I was on the main page watching Borat 2 when it first came out on Amazon Prime property. When it first came out, I did a watch party with like 90,000 people. Pluto TV can manage to get streaming access to every random rerun out there in the universe to fill 250 channels of free 24-hour content, then why not you, Twitch? And hey, you have Amazon Prime videos and exclusives over there. You ever think about getting streamers to react to those? Maybe drive interest in all those random art house films that you're always paying people to make? Or, you know, the good shows like Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which is fantastic and deserves more love. We live in an oversaturated- Again, they do that already. It's called watch. Uh, it's called Prime. Like, there's, there's watch parties. ...in media environment where hype is more important than ever for getting people to care about new movies and shit. This is kind of, it makes him look silly, too. Like, it, this actually makes him look silly. I know he, like, added this, uh, and, and, you know, this is, like, what he put out, but it's just, it's not good. Like, I'm sorry. I know a lot, of, I like how a lot of big streamers have broken the rules and haven't been permaban, while smaller streamers get permaban when they slip up once. So, I mean, I'm, I, look, I'm saying this, uh, I'm saying this once again, like, I... I, I like Matt Pat. I, I like game theory videos. I think he's entertaining. Uh, I haven't watched some of his stuff in a very long time, but it's, uh, if you are, if you've watched like any Twitch, that's kind of strange because it's like, if you watched any Twitch, then automatically you're like, well, what the it, it, it honestly makes me question all the other times when he's like done videos like this. Like what the fuck was I led astray? shows and so doing stuff like partnering with streamers has huge impacts for viewership and brand awareness you think it's a coincidence that the bob ross painting challenge became such a big trend over here on youtube after the bob ross twitch stream revitalized his name in the public consciousness so when i say that twitch needs to grow up as a platform i don't mean that in a finger wagging old grandpa matt pat here on youtube knows the best kind of way i also told youtube it was time to grow up last year so it just seems to be the kind of thing that i do now dad pat's final form has truly been unlocked i know there's always going to be resistance to the idea of becoming more corporate. Everyone wants to be the underdog rebel who doesn't play by the rules. But as we just talked about, there are clearly ways to have fun and make a profit for everyone while still following the rules. Twitch is so close to getting things right, but it's the creators that can really help make this final change. Don't just try and get away with what you can. Push Twitch to do better, to be clearer with its guidelines, to part- Dude, that's terrible. Like, it's like an unspoken rule where First of all, why is like a YouTuber literally saying do better to the largest live streaming platform? Like what is happening? I guess what happens to content creators is when they reach a certain level, okay? When they become a mega corporation themselves, okay? They just start, they, something breaks in their brain where they also operate like megacorp brain, okay? Like what is this? Do better. Implement a copyright content ID system, please. Like when that comes, it's gonna suck. Probably inevitable, but when it comes, well, like that sucks. And as a content creator, why are you trying to accelerate that process unless you quite literally have uh, interest in like, you know, taking a cut of that audience and like bringing it to YouTube or something or bringing Twitch down to like YouTube's level with respect to like how you make the content. He actually understands the Bob Ross situation is still light about it. He's not trading in good faith. I don't know. I mean, I don't understand with more companies the point is at the end of the day it's great to be a rebel but once you have have you considered that your personal choices could solve the systemic problem i just don't get people it depending on you their lifestyles their homes their families their employees you have a responsibility to be a good partner to them as a business were your creators in the wrong in this situation absolutely i don't think anyone could claim ignorance or reasonably argue otherwise but do you twitch <laughs> didn't he do this when the youtuber matt pat game theory found 
uh, that a young boy from Thailand who dreamed about having a Nintendo Switch, but due to poor financial conditions, he fabricated his own using cardboard and markers. MatPat went <laughs> and made a video to call the kid out, which went viral and got the eyes of Nintendo CEO who went to Thailand personally and sued the boy for $2.5 million of copyright infringement. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's, that's funny. What's like, what's happening? Why are people right? Why are people making videos like this? Like, it's just, they don't understand. I, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's just weird. Matt Pat be like, I'm a corporate lobbyist. <laughs> Everyone wants to be the rebel, but like Twitch should immediately implement a copyright ID system. Cause otherwise like content creators are gonna, content creators are gonna, you know, be, get in trouble share in the blame for creating an ecosystem where exploits and under the radar tactics take priority over responsible growth yes to that too and it's especially disappointing when there are so many other cool opportunities that you could be working to build for the benefit of everyone so get out there kiddo make better choices there bud mom and i'll be rooting for you from over here but hey that's just a theory a gaming platform theory thanks for watching and here that's sad uh it's interesting because like he doesn't even mention like I I uh, I don't know I mean that that was poor to be honest that's all I got uh pulling up the ladder once he gets off surely most of his videos could be struck for copyright I and mean, most of his videos probably have been struck for copyright the issue is that the like the more stringent the rules become the harder it becomes for smaller content creators it's not just me it's like literally it's worse overall for smaller content creators always. Big content creators will be able to withstand the storm that comes as a consequence of like copyright, uh, additional copyright restrictions coming out of the platform. Small content creators, on the other hand, will not be able to. So anyone that says, oh, I care about, uh, got under your skin much, use your words. You fucking got me, dude. You got me. Dude, why? Like, you know, I took two days off. You're a 17 month subscriber. Okay. You know exactly, exactly what pisses me off. And you're doing that right now. Okay. You're, you're personally this opportunity uh, as a 17 month subscriber to try to piss me off well guess what dude thank you for the 17 months of consistent uh five dollar a month subscriptions guess what dude if you are gonna try to derail the stream then you can take a permanent ban and no longer write in the chat how about that considering that i took uh i don't know an hour and 30 minutes to uh, an hour and 30 minutes to respond to every single point every single issue that was addressed personally that uh and and you know i did it in a very thoughtful manner and then you came in and decided this is a good opportunity for me to piss you off and put an extended put you under an extended stun lock because i'm a selfish piece of shit and i do not give a f about the thirty thousand other people that are watching currently i will permanently ban you this is the first time i've executed someone today whisper network you know, of what they, they already have that with um with uh, with prime it's just it's just that it's not very refined it's not worldwide it's a bit of a problem but I think it shows that that the, the, the future is trying to get there. We will get there. Yeah, some people are trying to cut the line and kind of be scummy and go, go ahead of the curve or whatever. Yeah, I get it. But it's going to get there regardless. So whatever the boomers and the molders and, and the big corporate cutlorders that want their 50 cents or 2 cents or, or 0 0.01 cent on the, on the ads off the shit. Uh, yeah, I mean... They, they're, they are right, but later on they'll be they'll be wrong. But I, I don't know. I shows you can get away with streaming on Twitch without getting what? a copyright strike. But instead of that, what happens when a company with a big nostalgia property decides to openly give? Because co watch co watching watch parties and and and, and, and comedy engagement in larger things is the future. With live, con it is the future. It this will never change. You'll never change your mind. Watch parties and watch stuff as as a group is the future. Opportunity. Anyway, we're moving on from the bad mood, mood uh, bringer stuff to good mood bringing stuff. Um, hey, Matt Pat, I'm pretty disappointed here. And so is our community. Your recent GT Live came across as an Undertale clickbait mashup instead of being about Heartbound. You never linked to our game and you got our studio name wrong as well. Sorry about what came across as defensive again. I meant no disrespect, but apologies are one thing. Actions are another. All games will now be linked to download. First, I don't review the thumbnail tags, description, etc. prior to live streams going up anymore. That's handled by two members of our team. I said their goal is to make live streams as searchable as possible and for games with limited searchability. That's important as it gets them the audience and attention they deserve. It's the same rationale behind our Delta Room videos being branded as Undertale 2. Your game is great. And by relating it to something similar that our audience already knows and enjoys, we're hoping to introduce them to 
to it when they might not have checked it out and left with zero context. That's the rationale. Yeah, I mean, I don't care about him clickbaiting as long as he, like, actually links the game. Oh my god, a ride in the Ford Illuminator oh, concept awesome. you love? Shut the f*** up. I love this. I want this so bad, dude. I want this so bad. Work with brand like T-Mobile and Airbnb would love to share what they care about running ads on. There was some other, like, uh, piracy shit going on with Linus, which, you know, people were mad at Linus, I think, for pirating software <laughs> again. And, uh... I saw that drama. I mean, obviously, I'm like, I love piracy, so piracy is great. Already cheating on the take hussy, I see, despicable. Okay. I'm wearing a hoodie that says men can be feminists, too. I, I feel like I have to be over oh here. Oh, God, dude. I just like... Uh, uh. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>